Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about Starlink. Starlink is a new Wi-Fi from satellites. It's um, it was built by Elon Musk and put together by Elon Musk, and um, they're talking about having it in the Philippines now. For you guys that don't know, now I've heard that the 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 membership to get in or to get on the list is like a hundred dollars or whatever to get on the list. I have not yet seen any lists yet. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can find that tonight. I'll look into that a little bit more. But I, I did see the article on Phil Star, okay? And I just wanted to throw this out, out there because this might be the catalyst that changes all these other Wi-Fi carriers out there into becoming better companies because of the fact that everybody's gonna be running out and getting this here that has money. Now, could the average Filipino get this type of um, Wi-Fi? No, probably not. It, it's just way too expensive and way out of reach of most of the average Filipino out there. And in fact, even for most of the expats out there, this would still be pretty expensive at $710 plus you have to pay the fee each month or whatever, $100 or whatever it is, whatever the fee is gonna be. Um, I've heard numbers thrown around. I'm not quite sure what those numbers are gonna end up being in the end. I think they might change a little bit and come down a little bit because I think once they see that this is a third world country, um, it's only gonna be go going to certain customers that have money and it's gonna be more high-end customers, which the Philippines really doesn't have that much of. They have a lot of wealthy people over here, but m the majority of the people over here are, are, are in poverty and can't afford that type of money when they're only making three hundred, four hundred dollars a month. That's the sad part about the whole thing. But it's something I'm going to think about for several reasons because, you know, I wanted to get some sort of um, Wi-Fi that I could always talk outside the country and not worry about the system breaking down and possibly getting maybe a generator to run my Wi-Fi. God forbid, you know, electricity goes down. I can still talk. I can still talk to my sister, I can still talk to my family, I can still talk to people back home, I still have connections um, with people all over the world. I don't have to worry that much about about my Wi-Fi. And that's a good thing. Um, and it's a good thing also for you guys to think about possibly getting this when it comes here. Now, I'm not sure when they're gonna start delivering on, on this and giving everybody all the, the, the things that they need to start this up. But this is this is excellent for expats. It really is excellent for expats. One of the guys sent me the story. I also had heard about it through the grapevine too, but I just wanted to do a quick video about it. Nothing really big, just you know, put it out there, keep your eyes out, um, because when it comes here, you know, you definitely probably might think about getting getting into that and having it and then getting a generator to run it. God forbid we have a, a, a really bad brownout or a power outage or a grid failure or, or something. We still have something you know, we can fall back on and talk to people back home. But also, that generator might help you, you know, with um, other things like your refrigerator or whatever. Just get a small gas generator. Uh, make sure you have enough gas on hand. You know, and every once in a while, just pour it into your car and get some new gas. So you have fresh gas all the time. Put a little bit of stable in it if you can get it for the gas to keep, keep it fresh. A lot of guys over here are, are swinging towards... Um, solar batteries or solar generators as some people call them um, and during a typhoon um, if it wipes out electricity that's only good if the battery's fully charged number one and number two is af if after the, the typhoon goes by we have three to four or five days of, of rain or whatever you're not going to be getting that much electricity from the solar panels and that that's another issue that you could that would arise over here. So you might be best to just be thinking about maybe having either both or or one. You know, um, I'm kind of swinging more towards the gas gen generator myself just because of the fact that it's cheap, um, gas is readily available, you can start it up whenever you need it. Um, you'd probably only use it for a half hour here or there and while you have it on, you could be running your refrigerator or whatever or running your Wi-Fi and then shut it off and use it again during an emergency. That's the good part about a gas generator. The other one, you know, if it's a cloudy day, like I said, you're not going to be getting much of a charge on your solar generator and it takes hours to charge. Hours. Sometimes the whole day to charge it up. So, you know, think about that also. But this is certainly a great step in the right direction for expats to be able to have Starlink. 
And when I when I saw that, I was I was pretty happy about that. The fact that we have something more reliable. Not that our that that our Wi-Fi is terrible, but it's not the, certainly not the greatest in the world. People ask me, "Hey, Steve, is the Wi-Fi here good if I'm doing day trading or something like that?" Um, in most cases, yes, but you're going to have some problems here and there at night. It really doesn't go down much as much as it does during the day here. And you're, if you're going to be trading on the New York Stock Exchange or anything like that, you know, you're going to be trading nights when the internet really doesn't go down that much. So there's usually really not much of a worry for people like that. So you can still get fairly cheap internet. But I do notice that the internet is slowly getting better here. But I do know that the lines, some of the lines, they leave very low to the road and a truck just takes them out every once in a while. And then um, it takes us out for like about two or three days here or there. And then we're back up again and they put the lines right back in the same place that they were before. And it seems like about three to six weeks or a couple months later, the lines all get taken out again. So we have a backup internet and even the backup internet gets taken down when that happens. Um, so this might solve all that. But anyway, guys, God bless. Take care.